Welcome, I am Brian Cook, and today I am joined by Alex McKinley of the Epic Storm team. We're going to drop some knowledge about this spicy list in front of you. Welcome, Alex. Hey, everybody, what's up? So Alex and I were talking last night along with Max Carini, who was recently in a video about Doomsday. You can find that video in the card above. And we were discussing, is green right or is it correct to be playing right now? And after our discussion, we landed on the deck list in front of you. We did have an iteration before this where we were playing a pure Grixis list with four main deck Thoughtseize. And Alex, what was the observation you had about that list? It's, it's Thoughtseize is really painful. So in early earliest iterations of the TES archetype, we have not as many uh, expensive cards like these days we have galvanic relays, we have, you know, Echo that increase the average mana value of the deck. And adding Thought Season increases the amount of damage we take over time and makes Ad Nauseam a lot less reliable than we're used to it being. So being re reliant on Thought Season completely just, like, makes Ad Nauseam just not as good as we want it to be, which is really unfortunate because the, the theory behind the, Grixis, the pure Grixis list was really good. But making our best card just a touch worse was just not... It wasn't good enough. And it was really awkward that you, one of the strengths of this list, in my opinion, recently has been in the matchups where you don't want to use your life total as a resource, you can go very low on life and then win from one or two life versus Delver or whatever. And it was a really big issue that Thoughtseize was a life based protection spell in those matchups. So we ended up on white because if you go back and look at 13.6 which is this list right here this was my list from the how to beat initiative video and you can find that in the card above as well but i really thought that this was a solid start um but the fact of the matter is it wasn't good enough like it is an improvement compared to what we were doing like slaughter pact was good crash was good but something else happened in the metagame something that forced us to take action. And Alex, I'm going to bring up Goldfish now. So when we look at MTG Goldfish, we see is it Delver in first place at 16.5%. We see 8 cast here at 5.7, Doomsday at 3.6, and Just Guy Control. This is a little bit over 25% of the field. And then if you look at the rest yep. of the decks, uh, Alex, what are they? They're, they're all non-blue decks, or they're matchups that pretty much no matter what we do, we're not going to win anyway. And so this really decreases the power of green. Because all of our green cards are anti-blue cards, right? Or black cards. And when you look at this, there's not a whole lot of black decks in here. Yes, there's Doomsday, Reanimator, um, Acast isn't actually a blue deck. And then Oops All Spells. But Oops All Spells, the matchup isn't even about their four discard spells that they play in the 75. Doomsday plays four, Reanimator plays four. So do you really want to be playing Veil of Summer for, I don't know, I guess 12 total discard spells in the upper echelon of decks? Yeah, the, the best part of Veil against Reanimator was just, just the fact that it beat uh, Archon anyway. So it didn't really matter that you could veil a discard spell because you'd rather just veil the, the triggers. Exactly. So. Or for lists that still play Chancellor of the Annex, but even Chancellor is falling yeah. out of favor nowadays, so that's not super relevant. But when we start looking here, a lot of these model weight initiative decks, Elves, Painter, uh, some of these Lesney Adepts, Death and Taxes, Boros Initiative... When we look at these decks, a lot of them have Mind Break in them. So this uh, list hasn't been updated yet, but the most recent well-performing list was a first place list by Alessio here, three Mind Break Trap. And one of the Elves lists that did well in the PTQ yesterday also had three Mind Break Trap in the board. When we switch over and look at Painter, uh, this one, once again, Wolfish hasn't updated to the most recent well-performing deck for some reason, but we see three Mind Break Trap here. The list that came in second place in the PTQ yesterday had four in the sideboard. Four Mind Break Traps. Uh, Celestia Depth sometimes has them. It's it's tough to say. Uh, I didn't click through these before we went live, but sometimes you see it in here. Um, Death and Taxes is a deck that's... Yeah, the d, d plays it. If there's one thing that Brian hates, it's losing to Mind Break Trap. <laughs> so we had to change our, 
our uh, our stance here, right? Because Veil is one of the cards that doesn't beat Mind Break Trap, and it doesn't beat and uh, Thoughtseize is, isn't good enough to rely on 100% of the time. So that's where the idea to go back to white came through. And the other part about Silence is that you get to use it uh, offensively as well to interact with your opponent. Veil is very much a defensive-only spell. We can only use it as protection. But you definitely get to Orm's Chant, your initiative, stomp the opponent to prevent them from casting spells for a turn, or your Reanimator opponent, or your Doomsday opponent, or even your Oops All Spells opponent. Uh, you get to interact with them with these silence effects in ways that's much more important than the uh, potential card off of Veil at the moment. I would agree with that. And if you go back a really, really long time ago, back to when I was decent at Magic around 2011, I might have done well in an event way back when, there was this thing that we would do where we would cast silence on our opponent's upkeep, and it was called silence walking because they couldn't cast a spell for the rest of the turn, and the only way that you could really be punished was via Wasteland. Well, when you look at the current metagame, Initiative doesn't even play Wasteland, so they can't punish you on that access. Earlier today, I played a practice league, uh, Alex. It was 2 a.m. last night when we finished uh, wrapping up this list. I woke up this morning. Maybe for you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're on the wrong coast, I'll forgive you. Um, but it was like 2 a.m. I woke up and I was like, you know what? I'm going to try playing a league and I went for one in that league. I did silence walk my opponents twice in their upkeep. So it is a play that happens. Uh, but I also got to use silence to stop oops, all spells in that league and painter from killing me. It was pretty good. And by silence, I mean, Orm's chant and silence. We are playing a split on these today. So Orm's chant can be kicked to stop an attack step. Silence is a split that gets around pretty narrow things, if I'm being completely honest. So like the cyborg ley line of sanctity out of oops, all spells, but you also get to dodge things like surgical extraction. Um, you know, there are much of peacekeeper, et cetera. Yeah. There's name uh, cards in the format that playing a split certainly helps. And I think you could argue that kicking and not targeting are both like secondary, almost like, they don't come up often. I guess that's what I'm trying to say here. So trying to split hairs between these isn't like very practical. Yeah. The other big difference between uh, the current era and our early Veil of Summer lists is that we're not just relying on Veil of Summer to beat the blue decks anymore. We have we still have the three main deck copies of Galvanic Relay, so it's a lot easier to just like present multiple threats uh, to your blue opponents rather than have to have one threat that's like double or triple protected. Exactly. And that's that's very powerful. So we don't actually need the full anti-blue power the way we were a couple of months ago. When there's no carpets, no abrupt decay. I mean, abrupt decay to lead into the sideboard is potentially the biggest loss from green because silence and veil are very similar. And the best part about decay was that it beat all these permanents out of the blue decks, except the, these blue decks are not really playing them anymore. Uh, where's, where's the... There's a counterbalance, there's... But we're not seeing the uh, maddening hexes or the deafening silences or the Aether Sworn Canonists out of these Jeskai decks anymore. There's nothing. It's all spells. So, it's spells and back to basics. Yeah. So playing Abrupt Decay just so you can hit a one of counterbalance out of the sideboard to visit Delver is kind of a trap. Yeah. Like a lot of the times you can win through it. To be fair, having Veil of Summer was one of the keys to beating. Uh, counterbalance in general where you could just try to sneak that through but i i think that we'll be able to just muscle through with relay and it's it's a loss but the the metagame has changed we need to adapt to beat the entire metagame not just set our sights solely on killing uh delvers of secrets anymore agree 100 percent. one of the things that i found playing this cyborg and it's kind of interesting obviously prismatic ending is one of the best removal spells ever printed it's just so so good but we were playing Abrupt Decay, we were playing Two Crash, we were playing Two Slaughter Pact, previous lists even had Chain of Vapor. Prismatic Ending really consolidates a lot of that into one super efficient card. So we're down to one Crash, one Slaughter Pact, and then a Pulverize. But when Alex and I were talking, we were like, well, do we even need the Pulverize? And we were trying to find a 15th card to play in this slot, and... Honestly, none of them were good. We were talking about Grape Shop, but like who plays Veil of Summer anymore? So like, do you really need that? It felt like such a useless slot. And at least Pulverize gives you the out of beating Double Chalice or Chalice Trinisphere against Moon Stompy. But it's just, 
it's not a card you necessarily have to play. And if we found another card we really wanted to play, like let's say, for example, Reanimator became like the second most popular deck or whatever, we could cut the Slaughter Pack, the Crash, and the Pulverize for three Surgical, and four Ending would be enough. That's how good this card is. Yeah, and that's that's the crazy part is, like I was watching Brian do some development. I haven't been playing as much Legacy. I've been focusing on some other things. Uh, but I was watching Brian build these sideboards, and they looked like ant sideboards with you know sixteen different flavors of removal spell. And it's like, okay, what are what are we doing here? Something feels wrong. This isn't a good way to build a sideboard. But I, I think that we've we've kind of found it of what needs to happen, and maybe there's more anti combo slots we could develop here uh, to be more of a real plan. But I, I I like what we have, and. If you notice, we split our sideboard into threes a lot. The prismatic ending, sometimes you can board in three copies and leave one in the board to Burning Wish 4. Depends on how things map. But uh, you cut three relay for three Thoughtseize. You cut three relay for Crash, Slaughter Pact, and Pulverize. If, if you wanted to, that to be the surgical slot, that that's a swap there, right? Like It's, it's already architected in a way that those swaps exist and uh, map very neatly, which, which I enjoy. Yeah, for sure. Uh, right now, I do feel like we're overboarding a little bit. So in the future, this list might adjust slightly. I don't want to say that this is set in stone. We're still very much in an experimental phase at the moment. But I'm sure you'll see once we get to boarding against initiative, assuming that we face it, it's tough because you're boarding out Relay and Bobbles. Those are seven cards coming out. And you're like, why, why are we boarding out Bobble? It works well with our Opals. Relay and Bobble are sort of a package. If you wanted to, you could try boarding out Brainstorm to keep your Opals live, but the time aspect versus initiative is just so brutal, and that's why I think that you just have to board out Bobble. Uh, that's my stance, at least, but I'm open to being wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've said what I have to say about the deck list, unless you have any final thoughts, Alex. No, nope, that's about all I got, so... Okay, that sounds good to me. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this little bit long deck tech, but for now we're going to hop on in and start match number one. Hope to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicstorm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Round number one. Once again, I have Alex McKinley with me. We are on the play versus from Mario 88. Alex actually got paired against them two days ago when I was recording my Belcher video. And I'll be honest with you, audience. Alex doesn't watch my video, so I'm going to spoil it. Alex, our opponent was playing Rakdos Reanimator. How do you feel about this hand against a possible Reanimator opponent? Well, this this hand cast turn one ad nauseum. So I I would choose to keep this hand and then uh put ad nauseum on the stack. Okay. I don't know about you, but uh that that's that's kind of where my head is. <laughs> I think if I made hammer time content, Alex would watch my videos, but uh I'm not about that life. I've been trying to play a couple of different decks. I've been meaning to watch content for them for a few days, and I haven't even gotten to that. So I just don't watch magic content, unfortunately. I, I wish I had time. Yeah. Busy lives. All right. So our opponent kept seven. We will activate our Bloodstained Mire. Grab Badlands. Lotus Petal. That looked like an F6. Right of Flame. Sacrifice the Petal. We'll play Dark Ritual. And Ad Nauseum. What a way to start. Huh? You just love to see it. Uh -huh. It feels feels like home, you know, flipping Echo of Eons. All right, so now we have Metalcraft. That's a good start. Our Red of Flame makes three. So if we can just hit a Lion's Eye Diamond, I think we're in decent shape. Would you look at that? <laughs> Would you look at that? All right, all right, uh, all right. Should we stop here and not show our opponent any of the white cards? That seems fine, yeah. I mean, this is this is the win, so... Uh, I showed them a Marsh Flats. Hopefully that doesn't give anything away. I mean, if our opponent's savvy, they, they might pick it up, but... Yay. 
Might as well, you know, bobble them a little bit, see if that induces a concession. You know, pick up that free information. Marsh flats? Uh, they have also have a marsh flats. <laughs> I think that uh, our reanimator guess might be, in fact, correct. All right, so we're going to put Burning Wish on the stack holding priority. We will sacrifice Lion's Eye Diamond. And for those of you that are paper players, you cannot ask your opponent if Burning Wish resolves and then sacrifice an Lion's Eye Diamond. That is not how it works. So, uh... You'll see here we are picking up game number one versus reanimator. For sideboard options, uh, it's pretty easy to cut our relays here and bring in our thought seizes. It is a little bit awkward that we don't have uh, any answers to a uh, Chancellor of the Annex. We do. We um, have Slaughter Pact. Oh, true. Maybe we put that card in our deck then. I mean, I don't um, want to, but we can. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's better than one of the silence effects. Yeah, probably. Specifically Silence here because the kick on Orm Chant does matter to get the full time walk effect of no combat steps, so. I want to take some mulligan. How do you feel about this hand? It's an interesting one. It's really awkward. If we had a second land, I think I'd be like kind of into keeping this. Um, or if we were on the play, but I think it's just a touch slow. How do you think? So my thought process is we have Bobble. So we can start off by silence walking and then use bobbles to like draw into our second land and potentially brainstorm with this stuff because the silence will buy us time, assuming we don't get hit by a discard spell on turn one. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't silence and brainstorm, but that is yeah, we do not play Tundra. And let's say Meyer doesn't get Tundra, even if we did. Yeah. So you want a mulligan? I'm, I'm not against it. I think we can, I think it, with the double bobble and if we're just going to silence walk on turn one, but it's probably fine. It's close though. So you would mulligan, correct? I think if I was playing my, myself, I might mulligan, but I'm not sure. Let's just do it then. Okay, so here we have like a really re like interactive hand. We would bottom a bobble if we kept this. Yeah. And these both, neither of these mox opals is on. It's like fetch underground, see thought, see is brainstorm, and kind of go nowhere. Five. And, oh, damn. Maybe we should have kept that first hand. Our opponent's keeping up with us on the mulligan count, though, so. I mean, this is the best hand we've seen. They're going to four as well, yeah. so it's four versus four. I think we bottom chrome mox, right of flame, and maybe the other right of flame. Close. I think there's definitely a world where we keep both Rite of Flames uh, instead of Dark Ritual Land, but this is also fine. Well, if you even keep both Rite of Flames, you can't relay. And even if you did, it'd be a relay for four. Mm hmm. Yeah. I'm just thinking about a world where our first draw step is LED. I mean, yeah. I mean, if we draw LED, uh, it would be nice, but. Feels a little bit like wishful thinking. Are they going to pass? Is this just like in two? Yeah, I guess it's like maybe. I'm I'm just like wondering what we're hoping to draw here. I was thinking of the more realistic game where we don't spike the best card in our deck, and that we want to like tap two lands. Wow. Um, for burning wish into echo. Yeah. Maybe that's wrong. Yeah, I guess it's a question of how many turns you think you're going to get. Well, apparently the answer was none. Because we're just getting bought. Yeah, apparently nothing we did matters. I think even if we keep our first hand, we still get wrecked by this start from the opponent. And now they're putting our kind of sure. cruelty into play? Jeez. Alright. Uh, so we're dead on board? Is that accurate? I caught an attack for nine. I guess we go to one next turn, right, but see. they have another Archon that they could put into play. They got us. Mulligan to four, turn one. Sure. All right. Let's well, uh, turn one for turn one. You know, fair play, fair play. All right. I think I want the silence over the Slaughter Pact. Like when we're on the okay. play, I think we can afford it. Yeah. On the play for game number three versus Reanimator. So we have Ad Nauseam again. We don't have any way to interact. 
and we can't actually cast the ad nauseum. So we could, the goal with a hand like this is to brainstorm and hide the ad nauseum on top and draw into a bunch of mana and then hope that you can untap. Or we could just mulligan looking for one of our seven interact plus, you know, good cards. Maybe I'm on like too much uh, brainstorm hopium, but I would I would keep this as a as a plan, right? Because on turn two right now we have one, two, three, four mana. So we just need to find a plus one with this brainstorm uh, to win on turn two with ad nauseum. And we went through discard spell. Well, if our opponent's smart, we don't win through discard spell. Um, yeah. Went it with a pretty fast mulligan to five, though. Okay, they've kept their five. We're going to search up underground C. Tap it for a blue and cast brainstorm. This was... This is enough. We can add nauseam with this no, no matter what our opponent does. Yep. Oh, we're gonna... Um... Are we going to add nauseam in our own upkeep? Yes. So I'm just, Let's go. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of how I want to stack this. Do we want to put the Burning Wish there, or do we want to put the Chant there for less damage? I think it's probably the Burning Wish. Yeah, just guarantee the Wish. Could also just put the land back for no damage, but... Maybe that's better. Unless they have their yeah. own Surgical. I'm just going to put the Wish back. Yeah. So Ad Nauseam is our top card. Lion's Eye Diamond. We got the Chromox. I'm going to choose to imprint the Orms Chant. Because this way, when we discard our hand, there's an extra Rite of Flame in the graveyard. Or and if they discard Spell Us, the Rite of Flame ends up in the graveyard. I'm going to tap this for a white. Untap. And then let's make a stop on our opponent's upkeep. Or, or our opponent's draw step. And then I'm going to do it again. Pause for a moment. Right with the mind games here. Exactly. Untap. I would have just bobbled them in their upkeep just to see what they were drawing. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we can do anything. They just sacked the pedal. The thought sees me. What if I wanted that card in the graveyard? Looks like somebody uh, got rewarded for their tapping of a mox here, Alex. And mask is their top card. So now we go to our turn and we have a trigger in our upkeep. I'm going to sacrifice this Lion's Eye Diamond for three black. Draw a card. Back in the day, you could actually just do this without the bobble trigger. You were allowed to sacrifice your Lion's Eye Diamond and then float mana through your upkeep to your draw step. They corrected that with M10, I believe. Yep. Okay, so pretty good start. We're at seven. Not a land in here. Uh, there we go. So the reason I wanted to mention a land was if our opponent tries to silence us, we have Orange Chant. And the, like it seems really weird, but a bunch of uh, reanimator lists for some reason have silence in the sideboard. So we get to dodge that. Wow. <laughs> uh, I was like, I'm going to stop here because... Being at seven life, I was like, if we flip Echoes or next card, we can't use the Bloodstained Mire. Rewarded. Yep. Firm is three. I would have just fetched for a white source and played the Orem's Chant just to start things off, but well, if they respond, the sequence is fine too. If they respond with their own, then you can't play out your artifacts. If you start this way, you do get a little bit of an advantage and you don't have to discard as many cards. It's almost free to do this sure. because if they respond to your artifacts, you can use this on their turn. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to cast Chant targeting them. All right, I put it. What do you got? Basic Swamp. That's not good enough. Resolves. They also increased our storm count, so I don't have to do any weird tricks anymore. So let's say they didn't cast the Entomb. My plan was to Wishclaw Talisman, activate it, go get a Lion's Eye Diamond. And then play the diamond burning wish tendrils. Now we can just wish tendrils. Tap the volcanic for a red. Hold priority once again, which is that control key. Sacrifice the lion's eye diamond for three black. Get out of here, reanimator. And we played through a turn one discard spell. True. We did it, Alex. We are undefeated. It's never going to get better than this. <laughs> I don't know. All right, match number two coming up. 
Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. All right, time for the second round. Once again, I have Alex McKinley with me. We are facing Delver Master Kentaro Hakori. We are on the play. Okay, this is a turn one Galvanic Relay, Alex. I'm not going to yeah, let you I tell me. I was about to say this is a Mulligan, but, uh, you know, Metalcraft is a powerful thing. Sure is. We start our crow box here, right? Don't want uh, them to actually think that we're playing Dredge and Force of Will. Our lines at diamond, right? Correct. I believe we play Chromox. We imprint the Brainstorm, Diamond, Opal, Rite of Flame. Hopefully the Rite of Flame resolves, and then we relay. And Taro did take a mulligan. Pitch. Lines at diamond. I think one thing to note about the Chant Silence version compared to Veil of Summer is you cannot use Silence reactively. So if your opponent casts Forcible, You've already lost your chance. You cannot then silence to protect. It looks like we are getting a relay for five on the first turn. Take that, Wasteland. Brainstorm. Yeah, brainstorm. even our opponent. Pretty good five. All right. Yeah. Get to go ritual claw claw if we want, but there's another relay in there, and uh, that that's looking mighty juicy to me. Agreed. Red Necker opponents. So good. Draw? Land? A... So I want to play out the land to decentivize Kentaro from countering this Dark Ritual. Okay. How do you feel about Brainstorm? I think I would do that, yeah. Storm 2. Okay. Yes. So... I think I'd put back... Uh... These two? The Opal and the Wish Claw, keeping the Double Bobble? So if we keep the opal, then we don't have to sacrifice the LED to go claw from exile relay. Okay. I think I'm gonna get I don't rid know of if that's the better. bobbles then. Yeah. Or hold on. It, it would be a claw. We're definitely getting rid of the claw, and it's just whether it's a bobble or opal, right? Play the opal. And Taro doesn't know that we don't have Veil in our deck, so I want to hide this card instead of just playing it out for no reason, because Kentaro is forced to respect Veil of Summer here. If they force this claw, that's fine. It just adds to Storm Count. Okay, so sure. I think there's a change of game plan here. I want the claw that's on top of my deck, I think. Instead of fetching it away, mm -hmm. I think I'm going to Brainstorm. Yep. This does mean that we have to... Wait, 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 wait. Uh, this means that we have to crack the LED to... I'm aware. ...play the relay, right? Yeah, I'd rather not relay and miss out on an action spell. So... I'm fine getting rid of the LED, I think. So why are we casting the Brainstorm, then? Because we have another Bobble on top. Okay. Two more yep. Storm. Yep, okay. Things make sense now. So we'll put these on top. Play the Bobble. Basically, I'm just trying to reduce our fail rate. Yeah. Storm 9, Galvanic Opal, and then the Wish Claw, and now we see seven new ones. Scrubland... Burning Wish. It's definitely a world where we could have put the Wish Claw on top of our deck and then shuffled away the Opal. But Fair. I think we're fine. I mean, we want mana anyway. I think it's fine. Ooh, double Rite of Flame. Yeah. And a third Galvanic Relay. And Taro just getting bullied. Although I did hear that you need uh, a bunch of, like, discard spells to beat uh, Delver. And here, we never even played a protection spell. Didn't need it. Galvanic Relay did all oh. the heavy lifting. You know what's neat about this sideboard mapping, Bryant? What, Alex? We, we just get to click Submit here. Wow. So you might be saying, hey, you're this viewer from home. You're wondering, Bryant, Alex, you have thoughts he's in the board. You're facing a blue deck. Why don't you board this in? What card in our deck is worse than thought sees in this matchup? Is it Chromox? Because Chromox is the glue that holds together Echo Ad Nauseam and Relay. If you want to shave an Opal, you can you might be able to go down one Opal. 
but everything else is actually like pretty crucial to our strategy and i think boarding in the thought seize is just a huge trap these thought seizes are really for combo matchups or prison they're not cards that come in versus board. yeah we have plenty of ways to beat force of all in our main deck don't need to bring additional ones in from the board alex for spreadsheet purposes would you count that as opponent concession i'd put it as like a relay win okay like, our, our opponent pretty much conceded to Galvanic Relay, so. For those of you watching from like home and you might not be familiar, Alex and I track our data, so I have this spreadsheet that I guess I'll bring over here for now. And you can see, whoops, that's not the right one. That's embarrassing. I'm going to edit that one out. <laughs> Timestamp that. Here it is, the right spreadsheet. Um, So, you can see here... Uh, I haven't put in yet that we faced, is it Delver? Just type in Delver. Uh, Blue Red Delver here. But basically it has all of our matches. I, I told you that I played a league this morning. Here's that league. I went 4-1. You can see that I tried another league last night with that blacklist. Did not go well. We went 1-4. and four. So Alex talked about the thought ceases being awkward that happened in that list. But this is all of my games since the Ragavan ban. Uh, and then we have a master spreadsheet that has all of my games, period, since the banning of Sunsea's Divine Top when I started trying. I'm down. I know that we don't have a yeah, payoff, but this... we're, we're not shipping this. Yeah, we have very stable mana. We have two protection spells, so... Put it on a one lander. Or at least uh, a one blue source hand, probably. Yeah. Okay. So they chose to shuffle on that ponder. Ooh. Okay. Easy game. So now we're looking for another permanent mana source, so that way we can write a flame into silence, into wish claw, all that good stuff. If you're looking to compare Orum Shant and Veil of Summer here, we'd be in the same spot if we had double Veil in our hand. Uh oh. Oof. They have the one of counterbalance, Alex. Yep. We could have silence walked there. I think that's actually pretty risky. Uh, for those of you watching from home, they are a wasteland deck, so just like randomly fetching to silence your blue deck, it seems unnecessary. They had the one of sometimes you just lose. Okay. Hmm. I guess. Uh, so this would be four, five, eight. So if our opponent has nothing, we could jam right now. Do you think it gets better from here? Probably not, because they get. Uh, time to set up their counterbalance with whatever they want. So, I'm going to try to hide some info here. I don't want to show them the white cards if we don't have to. So, I'm going to get Volcanic Rite of Flame. Counterbalance will trigger Scalding Tar. So, I can't play the Diamond. Brutal. Yeah. So I think what happens is we just get. Should we get the Scrubland? Scrubland. Yeah. Whoops. Wish Claw. So we are playing around days. If they force this, that's like kind of a big win for us. They daze it. We they pay. Double days? Right. Sure. So they have two lands in hand, and they're drawing a Scalding Tarn. They play the turn, so we know that they have five cards, and two of them are land. Draw for a turn. We're mana short of being able to add nauseum here, but we could echo if if the silence resolves. Well, it, that's not true because if you lead on silence, they can't. Uh, true, true, true. Yeah. So I'm wondering, like, mana doesn't work. Silence brainstorm here, like, lead on a card. We don't care if it's countered. Yeah, that's fine. And like, if they have a forcible, this probably draws it out as well, or at least uh, gets them to. Uh, fetch with their tarn or cast a brainstorm or whatever and we can brainstorm in response or not okay so they revealed ponder they're now drawing the ponder i think i'm gonna brainstorm never lucky so we know that they have a one on their t on the top of their deck now and they did not shuffle let's play out the lines at diamond they likely put a one so this turn i want to try to sneak diamond and wish claw into the They've already played two copies of Days. I'm not going to continue to play around this. Push Claw. They did have a Force of Will pitching Murktide Regent. They ponder again. Did not shuffle. 
Drew Land will pass the turn. Alex, what do you think about our current position? I'm not super happy about our current position, and uh, as soon as opponent proves that they can like actually win the game, I would be interested in conceding. But we're also kind of just one draw step out of it. Like if we draw Burning Wish and they happen to have not much on top, then we can like make some goblins or whatever. Uh, I mean, they are at it's, fourteen it's life. Like natural storm yeah. is not like we just have to get a little bit lucky. Like if they reveal a land on top, like that's good for us. They have I kind of whiffed on this iteration too because they just threw away a borrower. So we'll take that. They are one land away from having, um, what is it called? Mystic Sanctuary. Yep, I think that the Mystic Sanctuary is uh, very lethal for us because that means that the counterbalance can always uh, become whatever number they want, and that's really hard for us to beat. Ooh, the Mystic Sanctuary is in their exile. They just exiled it to iteration. Oh. Deal. Okay. Channeler, okay. That's also really good at maintaining uh, their uh, counterbalance, so. True. Yikes. They play the Mystic Sanctuary. They put Iteration on top. They look at our top card with the Bobble. So they're actually going to draw the Iteration here, which I don't think is what they wanted to happen. Come on, Action Spell, please. Boo. We'll play our own bobble. Counterbalance will trigger. And they choose not to reveal. They don't know their top card. Yeah, they're wondering if we're just playing it out as a bait spell. But they think that it's likely that we have nothing anyway, so there's no reason to give us the information. I think that we should hold on to the bobble to see what they leave on top with the counter. Yep. They play another iteration. Delver Secret. Okay, so we go to 15. They play the Delver and have five cards left in hand. It's worth noting that they've seen almost half their deck and have not played a Brainstorm yet. There's a pretty good chance they're sitting on a Brainstorm in their hand. Wasteland is the top card. We'll draw off Bobble. Hey. So, I think I like starting on Roy to Flame here, seeing if we can get them to respond with a Brainstorm. Yep. And then in response to the brainstorm, we get to Orm chant them. Exactly. And even Dark Ritual. Lightning Bolt. Uh, so we know that they have a zero on top, right? Correct. Um, so we should chant here. So if they force, they get to surveil, and we can respond with this. I think that's okay. So we'll chant. They have four cards in hand. All right. So we're going to respond to this. Dark Ritual. Uh-oh. I might have messed this up. We don't have a red source off the marsh flats. We have to. We need the lotus petal to resolve. Yeah. Or we need the right of flame to resolve. So we go to twelve. The counterbalance will trigger. And they revealed force of. Huh. They left that on top a bunch of times. I'm kind of confused by that. Well, we're gonna put our burning wish on the stack. Maybe they left it on top because of ad nauseum. Oh, that would make sense, yeah. And now we grab this Tendrils. Alex, aren't you glad we didn't concede? I am very glad we didn't concede. I, I didn't think we were getting out of that one, but... Take your counterbalance and just go home. We don't even need Abrupt Decay. All you need is some tight play. Or, or Bail <laughs> Summer. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a really good match. Uh, GG's Kentaro. Yeah, wow. uh, but we're 2-0. Maybe white is the real deal. Stick around and find out in match number three. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Third match, we're on the play, Alex. This hand is a lion's eye diamond away from greatness. How do you feel? I'm, I'm into it, yeah. 
Uh, we have Silence, we have Red Flames. Like, we're also, like, a Lotus Petal away from a Hardcast Echo. So, like, that that's also a reasonable plan here. Let's play this uh, terrific land, Plateau, and then play Mishra's Bobble. So one of the cool things here is that we can bobble our opponent in their upkeep, get a little bit of information, and decide if we want to try Silence Walk with them. Yep. Ancient Tomb. I am, in fact, interested in casting Silence. <laughs> See, Brian, Brian is scared of Plateau, but Plateau is just as good as Taiga. And Brian loves Taiga, so oh, I, I don't know why he hates Plateau so much. Don't talk badly about my homie Taiga that way, okay? Plateau is not the same. It is not the same. And we're facing initiative here. We saw Ancient Tomb, and then they revealed Cavern of Souls, so we're looking for... Even a land here could help us hardcast the Echo. Like a draw. I'd prefer a Lion's Eye Diamond. That's empty, I believe. No, that's a relay. We need a land for it. And that's the wrong land to give us Echo. So this is a uh, turn two empty for... Ten? Uh, ten, which is probably good enough, especially if they're going to tap that Ancient Tomb, so... I, I still think we're on the let's draw Lion's Eye Diamond plan. Yeah, this at least gives our opponents something to do uh, while we're uh, waiting to draw that card, so... Okay, ten goblins. Pass the turn. Too bad we don't have a basic land for stealing initiative. That's a deck building error. We should fix that. True. So they play two for a main deck cannonist. What? That's actually really bad Grr, news dude. for us. That is very bad news for us. So I the fact that they didn't have to use their ancient tomb is actually kind of annoying, but we'll kill them in three turns. I hope so. Not looking good, boo boo. Yeah. Canonist, Thalia, whatever. I think I'd crack the bobble earlier rather than later, just in case they have a random Spear of the Labyrinth. Okay. So there's the initiative. So we do have Burning Wish as a card we're interested in because it can get Pulverize or the Prismatic Ending. And they just conceded. We got there. Take oh. that main deck, Canonist. Take yeah, that. and it's possible with the silence walk, we stop them from going like Lotus Petal into Canonus or something like that. Hell yeah. All right. Let's, let's uh, do some sideboarding here. One moment. That was a turn two empty. Okay. So we're definitely interested in some number of prismatic endings. We'll do three for now. We're interested in some number of thought seas. So it's interesting on thought seas if you leave one of the board or not, because it is a wish target for mind break. That said, Mind Break is like a zero or two of in most of this. So like not all of us even have it. Um, but it is really good at discarding chalices and canonists and stuff like that. I think I'd rather have it in the main deck. So Alex, that number right there is 68. We have some cards to take out. You mentioned previously just taking Relay out of the deck. And then... You mentioned Bobble. Bobble. So yeah, this maps. It's not... This Perfect, is but it maps. 61. So we can, I can see trimming a silence. I don't think that like having all of those is perfect. So alternatively, we could bring an ending number four and just leave pulverize and take out silence number three. Mm. I think I'm kind of into it. Yeah. This gives us five. Man, ways I of almost do want the bobbles instead of brainstorm. We'll see how this goes. I mean, I'm down for that if you want to try it for game number. Yeah. Okay. This is yeah. decent. Keep. The Ganjo. Deafening Silence. So we have endings in our deck, but we don't have any in hand. So this means that they're probably not on Mind Break. Because most of us are playing Deafening Silence or Mind Break most of the time. We can yeah, play a very interesting list. There is a little bit of natural friction between playing Deafening Silence and Mind Break Trap, uh, because obviously if you Chalice first, or I'm sorry, I said that wrong, between playing Deafening Silence and Chalice of the Void, because if you Chalice of the Void first and then draw Deafening Silence, you can't play it. I'm going to brainstorm on their own. Thalia. We do have the Slaughter Pact. This isn't the end of the world. But this brainstorm. Oof. I think I'm good just going to game. Yeah. Okay. So we saw Deafening Silence. I think I just want to take out the chance. Let's bring in the Bobbles again. Do we want to make yep, any I'm other... I'm with this. Okay. Yeah. 
That seems fine. I think I'd rather have two baubles and two brainstorms. I can't tell you why, but that that feels better in my brain. These are just dead cards. I think we're supposed to ship this. I think I agree. It just doesn't do enough. Ugh. Going to five. This doesn't play any magic. This All is right. super fair. So we could try to keep this like ultra fair hand, or we can go to f uh, four. I don't know if this wins us the game versus initiative, especially if they're going to deafening silence or chalice us on one. Um, I'm going to go to four. Like, I think that this hand is a trap. So you probably bought him bobble and then like, I don't even know. Yeah, I don't think you could create a functional hand after you bought him cards, so. This is a four. Hello. So. This is turn one. It's not. Uh, you're short because it's a four. If it was a five, this would be a turn. Um, yeah. So we are going to bottom. I think it's supposed to be a diamond. Yeah, it, it feels really bad. But you just guarantee the turn two echo to unmulligan. Brutal. And I'm playing the fetch land first because we put a diamond on the bottom of her deck. I want to give myself the opportunity to potentially redraw it. I think I'm probably getting a white source with the scalding tarn. Okay. So the reason I want the white source is if they play something, I want to be able to prismatic. It. And Brian's a genius and fetch the uh, one that can also tap for red. So we, we're going to play in a mind break here. They, we saw deafening silence. If they're on deafening silence and mind break, that's really uncommon right now. So I'm going to choose to not play around mind break. And that looked like an F6. Yeah, and like echoing with any amount of mana floating is just so much more powerful than echoing with none floating. So. Term three. Uh, unfortunately, this doesn't do anything. Yeah. So I can hold these or I can play them out. I'm going to pass because I want them for storm count later. The interesting thing here is that we do have burning wish for pulverize available. We do not have burning wish for prismatic ending because all four endings are in our deck. I also don't have wish for thoughtsies. All the thoughtsies are in the deck. So. Okay. We drew them into deafening. So. That's a touch light. I think I still cast Thoughtseize as our one spell per turn. Yeah. If we had an answer to the deafening silence, I think I'd be more interested in that. But stopping some initiative creature or flip an Archon of a Mirror. They still swords in their deck? Jeez. We're definitely taking our Archon of a Mirror. Yeah, not thrilled about the rest of the cards in their hand, but here we are. I mean, Elite Spellbinder is the scariest thing left. Um. Sure. And I think I'm going to fetch just to pull a land out of the deck. They take a loaded battle. That's weird. You go to 16. I'm going to grab. Does it even matter? Grab the seat. Put our turn. I think I want to keep the turn around for brainstorm. And here I'm getting bit because we don't have the ending in the board. This hasn't come up for me yet, but obviously it does matter here. Yeah, we might as well cast this Lotus Petal, right? Yeah, I'm thinking about that. Uh, I'm just trying to, I'm like, trying to think if they're like there's any Burning Wish target that's relevant here. Don't think there is. They play the city, so they're likely to play an initiative creature this turn. They do. So their clock is looking a lot more aggressive now. Yep. We go to 13. Uh, I think that means that they have lethal next turn. Because they initiative adds two counters, this brings them to trapdoor next turn. We're gonna draw. It is an ending. Does that do anything for us? I don't think it does. We have seven mana here, so we could like make goblins, but I don't think it's very good with their flyer in play. Well, even if it buys us a turn, I'd be interested. But I think we're just dead to this thing because it gives protection. So whenever you attack target, yeah. um. This is a human warrior. So it can give itself uh, protection from creatures. And I believe that puts us dead. So it would be nine in the air. And then this brings trap door next turn. So we could tendrils to stay alive here, I think. And then hope to rip next turn. I think that's the line. We mini tendrils. The right of flame. Even if I draw a lion's eye diamond, I think we're a mana short up here next turn. So I'm not even sure what the plan is. Yeah. Yeah, we're one short of uh, Peer next turn. Maybe we draw Brainstorm into, like, the nuts? I, I don't know. 
but I'm going to take the line that keeps us alive for a turn. I, get, I suppose we can draw ad nauseum. Okay, so we're going to gain 10 life here going up to 21. It's worth noting that the previous list we were playing, the green list with the K, there was a grand total of two decays in the list uh, to answer deafening sounds. It's actually like one of the worst lists we've had in a very long time for beating deafening sounds because we were playing Crash and Slaughter Pack, no Chain of Vapors, so you had to cast Abrupt Decay to beat deafening sounds. Yeah, we were... Had to make the tendrils play and ended up very dead here. Uh, we're close to dead still. I don't think we're, I mean, we're not dead, but there's no. like we have theoretical outs. I mean, it's not looking good, but like it is possible for us to win. Yeah. Oh, they just, okay, now we're dead. They explored into Thalia. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you know, casual, no I... big deal. Had all these what they didn't play Thalia, yeah, they're just gonna take our burning wish, so it costs four and out of cast. I mean, all right, ad nauseum sure. into mono zeros. Let's go, yeah. We want to see ad nauseum into like nothing but zeros. Come on, deck. Ooh. All right, now we're dead. We can finally concede, Alex. <sighs> All right, we're two and one. Womp womp. Let's see the next card. No! Ah! Oh. Never draw the next card. Never draw the next card. Which it would not have been a successful ad nauseum anyway. So okay. Ah, oh, heartbreaker. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Okay, it's the fourth match where two and one. I'm going to go ahead and blame Alex McKinley for that last loss. I don't know what exactly he did, but we lost, and it's probably Alex. Well, Alex, accept a responsibility. Oh, yeah, so we're just going to rip a turn one ad nauseum with double silence back up here. <laughs> so Not quite, but... I faced our opponent last week, and they were on Goblin. So I don't know if they're still playing Goblins, but, you know, it's within the realm of possibility. Here we have turn one Burning Wish, if we want it, into, like, Peer into the Abyss. Uh, and then on turn two, we would have six mana. So we'd have a turn three Peer if that's something we're interested in. Yeah, I could be into that. Um, we especially also, if we don't get wastelanded. We also don't so. have to Burning Wish on turn one. I mean, we we could, yeah. but we can also just like land go. I'm I'm in the land go camp here. I think that like we wish on two and then win on three. It hides it a little bit more, uh, and it lets us play a, a land around wasteland or whatever. So also it gives us the out to draw LED to do this kind of a turn faster as well. So yeah, that's true. Let's play the Scalding Tarn and pass. So our opponent took a mulligan. They're on six cards this game. There's a mountain. Looking more and more like goblins by the second. Galvanic Relay. So we could Relay and Burning Wish this turn. Is that better than just getting Peer? So if we tap two lands and go get Peer, we have a land drop next turn. I think you're supposed to play the Boring do the boring play and just burning wish for a pair. Do you have any uh, competing opinions, Alex? Um, I think that I'm in just camp go get a pier, but that feels like it's the most direct way to win next turn. And so maybe when next turn we're guaranteeing the win next turn. So yeah, sometimes you just want that little bit of spice of life, though, right? Maybe true. Like this feels kind of boring. Like you know, ancient. Uh -oh. Uh-oh. Oh. They're on the Epic Gamble. Are, they're passing? Okay. Uh, Did we miscount? Yeah, we have six mana here. Um, oh, no. Uh, we can Burning Wish for Thoughtseize. <laughs> oh, no. Man, I am tired and rusty. He doesn't even catch that Brian miscounted. I mean, I this bring was all you... His I... fault. 
I bring you onto the channel to carry me, Alex, and then you don't talk for half the video. I'm stuck playing on my own here. Come on. I, I need someone to be good <laughs> at magic, and it's clearly not me. I think we just take the bonus round. Probably. Like, the if they relay, that's fine. That gives us another turn. Um, yeah. I have to hope that the draw step and mana morphos don't kill us. Amorphos. Storm one. Well, show us what you got. Manamorphos. Reckless Impulse. Ooh. We could have played out our Chromox to give them less mana here. Although I don't really feel like mana is their bottleneck. So, I don't know. No, I wasn't really thinking about Jessica's will either, and they're not even using it in mana mode. Burning Wish Seething Song. Well, they didn't make any black mana with their metamorphoses, so... I mean, Past um, Flame still looks really good here. That's true. I think we might have uh, lost this. Yeah, counting is hard. I'm very glad we took the, the uh, bonus round, though. Uh, I think if the bonus round wasn't here, then uh, we'd be in a lot worse shape. So our opponent should just go Burning Wish, Past Flames... Yeah. And, and then they get to draw all the cards again? Yeah. We'll see if they choose to do that. I'm going to concede to Past and Flame. Really? It's not deterministic for sure. They have a bonus round in their graveyard. They're going to draw. I guess. Yeah, I guess it's pretty deterministic. So. Like, uh, so they're going to copy Jessica's Will, copy these. They're going to draw 10 cards. Yeah, okay. And then yep. uh, 14 with the Reckless Impulse. All right, so I messed that one up. I should have been better at counting. Let's get these relays out of the deck. Bring in the thought seat. The only downside is that we're going to be on the draw for game. Assuming that we win. This does look more like Ruby Storm rather than the Epic Gamble, which are very similar decks, but uh, Ruby Storm is slower than uh, Tag on average. Um, not as much of a turn one deck, but more of a turn two, turn three shaped thing. But for sure. How are we feeling about this? I really like the silence. I think the silence buys us a lot of time, but not having uh, our own fast kill is like a, a little bit annoying. I don't know. Brainstorm goes pretty hard. I think I'd be inclined to keep basically on the back of silence, but... So if we think about how this game plays out, like... Are you brainstorming on turn one? Because you don't have brainstorm fast. Yeah, that's fair. And then our lands are too awkward. Yeah, that, that's that's is that like our spells are good, but our lands don't function. So I think I want to go to five. This is so much better. Okay. As we've seen so far, just did two lands and play out the diamond, pass the turn. So it's a little bit weird because we have to go shields down in order to play Wishclaw next turn. To play Lotus Petal. What are they going for? They're going for it. How do you feel about Chant here, Alex? So if, so if we Chant them here, then they can't play back half of Bergy, but I'm not sure if I care about back half of Bergy. I think my fear is if they front half Bergy into like Ruby Medallion, and then they're set up to win next turn. Sure. They're also like pretty unlikely to kill us off of. Ha <laughs> 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 ha ha ha! All right, uh, let's grab. Badlands. Probably a red source, I think. It's Badlands or Plateau, and probably Badlands. Play the Wish Claw. So we're just a mana short of ad of ad nauseum. The nice thing about Silence here is if we fail to draw the mana source, we are still protected on the following turn. Mm-hmm. Like now. All right, we'll pass. We could also wish Echo, but like, uh, that's kind of medium. Well, you're taking your shield of silence down. I'd rather not lose the game because yeah. we wanted an Echo of Aeon. True. That's a Ruby Medallion. There we go. So this makes three mana mm -hmm. because they have a Rite of Flame in their graveyard. And now we put Ad Nauseam on the stack. Storm 2. We're actually supposed to float a red here, right? I guess it didn't matter, but... Uh... Why do With the thoughts uses in the deck instead of the relays, it switches, right? I don't know if it matters. Like, red is fine. Okay, so we've revealed a whole bunch of cards here. 
We're still at 10, so we can flip a couple more. And we'll stop there. All we could ever want. Our deck is disgusting, by the way. Look at our mana base right now, Alex. Plateau, Scrubland, and Badlands. 2011 Bryant would probably be puking right now, knowing that he was playing the... I mean, 2021 Bryant was playing uh, Bayou, Badlands, and Taiga there instead, so... Those are respectable lands. And uh, I've grown to love Taiga. <laughs> Taiga is my homie. That's thought season. They conceded. So I think their plan there was to go Bergy, Ruby Medallion, make a mana, and then... Or they were just going to back half horn. Or they're going to cast the Inspired Tinkering, maybe? You have to sack something, right? Or no, it's discard a card. No? No? Okay. What? I'm thinking of, like, big score or something. My yeah. bad. Ignore me. But we won game number two. Do we want to change anything on the draw? Like, are you interested in Crash? I'm not sure if we are, but it's worth mentioning. I don't really think so. I think we're just want to be on Mono Silences and Thought Seizes. Same Z. Yes. <laughs> well, this wins on our turn one, so I am very interested in this hand. Keep. Point it with a mulligan to five. Take that. I can't believe that I can't count to seven. It's a shame. Okay, Brian. You know that Relay would have won, too. You know it. Oh, for sure. 100%. They have a turn one Lotus Petal and Ruby Medallion. Resolves. Come on, mana. Not mana. I mean, we still get to put turn one Ad Nausea. Not unhappy about that. So the how you know that you have turn one Ad Nausea is you just need to count to eight. I know that eight is, in fact, one more than seven, so that math is pretty difficult, especially if you're someone as dumb as I am. But even <laughs> I can count to eight here. Activate. That's just like one of those numbers you get to know playing the deck. I think I pointed out in my ABCs of TES article series. Okay, keep flipping. Being a Chromox there is pretty good. And another Chromox and an Opal. Alex, I'm feeling pretty good about this. That's the bottom. I'm also game. feeling pretty good about this. We'll stop there. Okay, let's play out a Lion's Eye Diamond. So the reason I'm playing Diamond here is this is really corner case, but what if for some reason our opponent had a surgical in their hand? This way you're not going to get your diamond surgical by play. All right, we'll imprint a thought seize. Tap this opal for a red. Dark ritual. Let's see what they had in their hand. The Bergmeister. We'll play a Chromox. Imprint Brainstorm. And we don't even need to sacrifice our Lion's Eye Diamond. We win the match. We recovered from my inability to count. Alex, I hope you're finally proud of me. Okay, I lost the last match. You lost a game here, but, uh, you know, we recovered, so. <laughs> All right, the fifth and final round will be coming up in just a moment. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Alright Alex, it's round 5, we're facing a supporter of this channel, Shootech. Shootech almost exclusively plays elves. That said, last time I faced Shootech, they were actually on Bosch and Roll's hot Bant deck. So knowing this, what do you think of our hand? I think odds are that they're on elves. Um, but this hand, hand is a little bit... But this yeah, hand it's a little crushes, bit versus elves. crushes hot Bant. <laughs> True. Uh... I think I'm down to Molly. Yeah, I think I, I think we can send this back for something a little bit more aggressive. This hand is in it. Speaking of aggressive. <laughs> Going to five. Yes, we're a mana away from turn one pier. All right, please be elves. Please be elves. Snow covered forest is a good start. Green sun. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb here. This is not hot band. Take a draw. Mm, okay, so 
We don't have Troan Pier, Alex. How do you feel about a Troan Echo? Alex has disappeared on me. I love a turn one echo. Okay. I love a turn one echo. Hey, Alex. I had a cat doing something very silly. I apologize. <laughs> Quit reading the millions of discords that you're in and hang out with me, man. Come on. Alex? Yeah, I, had a, I had a cat that uh, was attempting to talk to the channel. So, you know, had to deal with that. Uh, grab the echo of Aeons. Blue. Black. Spin the wheel. So I almost exclusively add one blue now. Back in the Ponder days, I would make blue, blue, one black. And I think that's just pretty much over. And I believe we yeah, could ad nauseum here, maybe even just Burning Wish Tendrils. I haven't done the math yet. Hey, Brian, do you know what would be happening if we had a main deck Tendrils right now? You know, I'm never inviting you back, Alex. You're a bully. <laughs> I had to get that in once this league, you know? Right of flame. Right of flame. We'll play the wish claw. So it's worth noting. Yeah, five, six, seven. So we, we, we have it anyway. Yeah. Who needs main deck tendrils? <laughs> Who needs main deck tendrils? Chumps. Apparently not Bryant Cook. Chumps need main deck tendrils. That's it. We're going to grab that burning wish. Cast it. Turns out that the latest Elves tech was Nourishing Shoal, and our 26th uh, life drain here isn't enough. Okay, we got it. I mean, you never know what Newton's cooking up these days. So let's get these relays out of here. I'm definitely interested in Slaughter Pact, because it's the most efficient answer to Collector Roof that exists. Uh, and then yeah. we have to be worried about mind break trap so as we saw the most recent goldfish list had three in the sideboard that won the challenge so do we want to bring in more answers to mind break or i guess that's like a weird way of wording it all right so we're at 61 we can bring in more answers to collector roof or but it comes at the cost of these mind break ants the mind break slots i can't talk you know what i mean yeah, it's really interesting, right? Because we're bringing in discard into what is now a discard mirror, and Thoughtseize can be oof, and it can be Mindbreak Trap. Uh, but I think having just one answer in our deck to go get Collector Oof, to answer Collector Oof, is not quite enough. So I think I definitely want some number of Prismatic Ending. Okay, so what is your solution? Like, cause I think we 64. want at least one on the board to wish for. Um, maybe we just bring in uh, this, this, these numbers don't work. Um, hmm. We could also try like boarding out like two silence, and then we'd have to find two of another slot. So you could do like one opal, and then like. Do we want all of the thought seizes? I don't know. We like, could... do we want a board answer to a mind break trap? We can leave it. I think... Yeah, this is kind of what we mentioned in the intro about the the board mapping being weird, where this where we have like too many removal spells in this matchup, but. What about this? Let's do two endings. This gives us three answers to. Yeah, this this feels cohesive. Like, I don't like the idea of boarding in a bunch of answers to like their one card that matters. Yeah, well, they kind of have five copies because of a. Uh... Green Sun. Green Suns, yeah. So I chose to keep this hand. I, I didn't wait for Alex. I'm sorry, but it's not an ultra fast hand, but it's a hand that's good against discard, which is what they often do in the matchup. Okay. Well, now it just became a fast hand. I think I'm going to play the underground. Okay. I like the turn one brainstorm here. I think it gives us potential to turn off and then leading on Allosaurus Shepard instead of discard spell means that they either actually have the mind brick trap Ooh. or they have, right. um, the, uh, or they have, uh, the oof. So, so we can put the two lands on top and then play out everything else and we can just add Nas whenever. Yeah. Unfortunately, we can add Nazium at Storm 2 as well. So. Well, not... We, we need to imprint here, right? Oh! I'm so dumb! Oh, you're right. I was like, imprinting Dark Ritual never even crossed my brain. Well, that's awkward. <sighs> yeah, you're absolutely right. Ah, uh, if we lose because of that, it's 100% my fault, not Alex's. Uh, although Alex could have talked faster. That's a hair destroyed. And a shepherd. They're trying to kill us. 
I think that this is a green sun for oof. Or right. it's just the oof. Uh, yeah, so we just get to add Nas in response. I'm gonna feel bad if I get hit by a trap. Okay. Okay. So we hit the white source for one of our endings. I might sack the pedal to brainstorm just to dig a little bit deeper if we don't hit it. All right, so we're, we're at 10. Let's reveal Burning Wish. We do have um, an ending in the board, but it's worth noting that Underground Seas are land, so we don't have the tools we need to do that. We're at 7, 7. Bill seven. All right, so that puts us to six. We can now die to, um, what is it called? Uh, Echo of Aeon. So I'm going to stop here. And then I'm going to cast Brainstorm off of the Lotus Petal. Mm -hmm. Just put two fetches on top. I don't think it really matters. Yeah, and we can scroll over and see if we hit. We did hit. Okay. All right, let's find a white land. All right, so we want to do blue, white. You know, your your everyday Azorius deck, that's what most people describe the Epic Storm as. Yep, for sure. Get out of here. Fisher's Bobble. And it's worth noting, stopping at six also means that your Thought Seizes are live. Mm -hmm. So we'll go to four. Natural Order Visionary. Play out another copy of Mox Opal. And Alex, not to count our chickens too early, but it looks like we went 4 1 this league. That's looking that way to me, too. Uh, this, this list felt really good. I think that there's a little bit to clean up in the sideboard with the extra removal spells and maybe figure out those slots a little bit bigger, better. But that, that's for maybe us in the Storm Discord or you in the YouTube comments to help figure out. Uh, so if you have ideas about what should go in those slots or what should uh, go uh, around, uh, let us know. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely interested in your feedback. But one thing to note, and I mean, maybe I'm just not using them correctly here, is like the Slaughter Pact and Crash are like silver bullets for Wish Claw, but there's a chance that maybe you don't need those. Yeah. And we got the 4-1! Yeah, only losing to an initiative, which happens, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's 8-2 and two on the day for me. I actually beat initiative this morning, so 1-1 uh, one and one on the day. Do you have any final thoughts on the deck list? Would you change anything yeah, right it's... now? Right now, no. Uh, I think it'd be interesting to see what these last three sideboard slots are. I think I like uh, 72 of these 75 cards. I love the main deck. I love the ending plan. I really like the thought seizes. That maps well. It's just figuring out the last couple of holes and then solidifying how all the board plans play out of whether you want to leave uh, an ending in the board or a thought season in the board to wish for, which I think is better in some matchups than actually boarding it in. But it's it's close and uh, it's going to require some thinking. Yeah, for sure. So the once again, the flex spots currently are Slaughter Pact, Crash, and then maybe the Cyborg Pulverize. I think that if we had faced Moon Stompy, we would have been interested in the Pulverize, but we just never did. And that's another matchup where the Crash ends up being more desirable than a Prismatic. So, yeah. you win some, you lose some. And uh, for the fans, let's open up these four chests, see if we get anything good. The verdict is we opened up a Ren and Six. I don't know if that's worth anything, but we opened one. I think it's worth a little bit, but Borderless Ren 6 is uh, pretty neat. Uh, let's let's punch up Yieldy GoBots. Or, uh, sorry, Card Hoarder. Yeah, Card Hoarder for sure. Card Hoarder actually sponsors this yeah. channel. If you're someone who skips over my ads, we're not friends. If you watch my ads, you'll know Card Hoarder is simply the best. So, uh, Card Hoarder is uh, buying this at a you know, cool 16 ticks. So uh, Not bad, not bad. Not bad. And we also got a Legacy All-Star Titania if you're a Nick Fit fan. <laughs> crickets crickets all right thank you everyone thank you alex for joining me alex we didn't do this in the intro so let's do it now where can the fans find you you can find me at twitter.com slash revars underscore you can find me in the storm discord and yeah that's basically where i am these days definitely not the epic storm.com definitely not there oh yeah, yeah that there too uh, as long as brian keeps my content up there uh, if you want uh intros to this wonderful deck I'm going to be talking all about uh, removal spells in just a few weeks and uh, 
it's definitely an interesting time to be talking about removal spells. For sure. Once again, everyone, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a great day. And as always, keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.